share some of your ideas over the course of the session. Maybe you can help me find the next new topic for my book or something. I would love to hear all your ideas. So I've written two books myself. Flying Fingers is my first one that I published when I was seven, and Dancing Fingers is my second one. It's a collection of poetry that I co-authored with my sister, and Flying Fingers is short stories. So as you can tell, I really, really love to write and read. And actually how I got started with writing was because I was reading very and I would just really read two to three books a day if I could get my hands on them. And um, I wanted to be just like the authors who I read, so I started writing, and that's how I got here. So tell me a bit about yourselves. Would, raise your hand if you like to read. I'm seeing a lot of hands go up. Wow, very good. I'm super happy to see that um, such a, uh, it's a group of such wonderful readers here. What about writing? Raise your hands if you would call yourself a writer. I'm seeing some raised hands. Good. Now, for this one, I think all of your hands should go up because many of you probably do some kind of writing every day, right? You're maybe writing a letter to a friend. You could be um, writing in school. You're, you might be writing up a story at home. Even telling a story, say, to a little brother or sister. And that's the skills that you're going to be using in writing. So when you think of the word writer, it would be easy to imagine just someone who's sitting at their desk and just writing all day, not really going out. Maybe some of you have that image of like this really lonely writer. Or maybe um, other people think of J.K. Rowling or Dr. Seuss. What is the image that comes to mind when you think of a writer? Haley? Nice to laugh. Are, are you able to hear him? Uh, yes. Because I can barely hear a, a person sitting at his desk, and um, I think he's got a bit more. Oh. And the pencil he's using does not have an eraser. Okay, so a person sitting at his desk, broken eraser, very good mental image there. I can definitely see that. And uh, by the way, that's great for descriptive writing, which I'll be talking a little bit about. So, um, you kind of have this image of this writer as just someone who's putting words down on paper. But the thing about being a writer is that it can make you much more than just a writer. Because when I started writing, it made me a world traveler in a few, in more ways than one. Now I've been to about 11 countries, I think, actually uh, traveling. But also, it gave me the chance to explore places I wouldn't have been able to if I weren't reading and writing. So it makes you a traveler, it makes you an adventurer. Being a writer makes you a bit of a spy because suddenly you're always on the lookout for new ideas. Maybe you're listening in on conversations sometimes and thinking, hmm, I could use that in my writing. Although, don't use that as an excuse to eavesdrop on people because um, your, <laughs> your parents may not like it. You say, oh, I was just looking for ideas for writing. Hey. So when you think I'm a writer, Remember that it comes with a big world of opportunities, too. Now, where do we get our ideas for writing? Where do you get ideas when you decide, I want to write something, where do you look? Hold up your, hold up your cards. Josh, go ahead, loudly. I look like um, all around outside sometimes. You look all around outside, great. So if you need an idea, you can just walk out the door and look around. Maybe it's those wonderful views. Maybe it's something very small, like a flower. Maybe it's a bunch of animals running around. There are so many different things outside that can give ideas. What else? What are some other places you can go? Uh, National. Um, you could go, like, in your room, so you could get quiet there. You can close the door and then nobody, and you won't hear a lot. Very good. I think he's looking at solitude. Oh, yes, I, I can't tell whether you, I, you seem to be able to hear them pretty well. Yes, yeah, I do. Luckily, I'm going to turn it to volume. So, yeah, definitely. Good. Go in your rooms, find some place where it's quiet, where you really feel inspired to write and you don't have too much distraction. Actually, this November, I did something called National Novel Writing Month, which is a very intense, it's kind of like a marathon for writing. You have to write 50,000 words in one month. And so I always would really put myself in, in this writing zone where I would just, you know, I'd be typing very intensely, and I would kind of block out all the 
possible distraction. And so definitely that is something you want to do when you're writing, is go someplace where you really feel free to be writing and not too distracted. What are some other places we can get ideas? So they don't have, it doesn't have to be an actual place. It could be a thing, like a book. Ruby? Speak to the camera if you can and louder. She thinks about history and she likes to write realistic fiction. Thinks about history and likes to write realistic fiction. Very good. I see a writer um, like myself. I also love history. Um, I'll oftentimes after I've seen like a history documentary or something like that, I'll, I'll always look at that as an idea for writing. And Actually, when you think about um, your classes, too, something that you learned in one of your classes, something you learned about, um, I don't know, bugs in science class could inspire you to write a story about giant bugs that take over the earth or something. So what are some, let's get two more places to get ideas. Olivia. So you get ideas from things that you face in your life. And she changes them a little bit. And you change them a little bit. Very good. So there are actually there's two big opportunities there. If you want to write like just about your life and make it factual, you could do something called personal narrative or a memoir. And that's really fun to do. And you could also take bits from your own life, put them into stories. I do that all the time. I've written characters who are inspired by other people. I just change their names so they won't know. <laughs> You can do that all the time. A lot of authors uh, say that some of their favorite characters are based on friends. And some of their villains may be a bit on enemies. But hopefully you don't want too many enemies right now. So let's continue on with this story writing made easy. Now that we know where to get our ideas from, let's talk a little bit about the ingredients that go into the mix for a good story. What are some of the things that your favorite stories have? What? Excellent. Very good. You really hit the point right there. All of our favorite stories have some kind of problem in them called the conflict. And it generally happens, um, I'm going to put this, so I'm going to actually write that down. Uh, conflict. And this is something very important to remember is you're making your plot or what happens in the story. The plot is the sequence of events. And you do insert a conflict. Now, does anyone want to give me an example of a conflict in a story? Example of a conflict? So maybe someone has a very important job, they have to bring this big, um, let's say a big crown, so a golden crown, to the royal capital just in time for the king to be crowned, and along the way they lose it or if it's stolen they have to backtrack their steps and try to find it before the crowning on, um, on a week away. So that would be an example of a conflict. Basically what you said, if someone loses something, maybe someone has to find something that they didn't have. What are some other examples of conflict? Alien trying to take over the world? Aliens trying to take over the world? Yeah, exactly. If you have um, anything where someone's trying to take over or... Um, yeah, that's a great example of conflict. There are a lot of science fiction stories that have exactly that conflict. And let's get one more example of a conflict. Okay. Well, like, I'm not sure if this is going to happen, but, like, if, like, like, there's a bad thing, like, like bad guys come to attack, like... Yeah, if bad guys come to attack, that is definitely a conflict in a lot of stories. I mean, if you think about uh, pretty much any story that involves some sort of fighting or the character is... is has to try to defeat some some other character, that would be basically bad guys coming to attack, right? So that's uh, definitely a common conflict. We see some conflicts happen with other people. Some conflicts can even be with yourself. 
So if you've ever read a story where the main character is really fighting with their own thoughts, and that sounds very weird, but you've probably all done it yourself. If you've ever looked at two kinds of ice cream and you thought, hmm, I really want that strawberry ice cream, but no, I want chocolate. No, I want strawberry. That's basically fighting with yourself. And that's a sort of conflict, more dramatic, but you'll see some of that kind of conflict in a lot of stories. Whenever a character has a hard time, should I report my, um, my, that my friend cheated on a test? Should I not because he's my friend? You know, that sort of conflict you'll see a lot. Uh, in stories. And a lot of times it's based on real life too. So we know that good stories should include conflicts to make them interesting. Otherwise we have a story where once upon a time someone lived very happily forever after the end and that's not super exciting. So conflict, a conflict creates suspense. Suspense is basically what makes you keep turning the page. Suspense is, oh no, what happens to Harry Potter, or what happens to, um, <laughs> what happens to the Pevensey children, or whoever else your characters are. So, what are some other things that most stories have? A really good plot. A really good plot, very good. You. Um, want to make sure, so I'm going to start writing these down. Conflict. And a conflict is part of a really good plot for sure. So, what is an example of a really good plot? We know that it should have a conflict, but what else should a really good plot have? Uh, nice characters. Nice characters, very good. You just added, uh, that's another very important ingredient. So, if you think about this as kind of a soup that we're pouring things into, you know that's have a conflict as part of the plot, good characters that people like. What are some other uh, of ingredients? Set, set. This, the setting, very good. Where the story is set. So if you have a really, really boring setting, you may have an awesome conflict a lovely plot, lovely characters, but if your setting, um, if your plot is five people go on a quest or go on an adventure, and your setting is they're all sitting inside a house for the entire duration of the plot, you might see a problem there, right? So you have to make sure that your setting is well matched. If your story is about an adventure or a quest, your setting is probably going to be them traveling around um, different places. If your story is about someone having um, going through a really difficult decision, it could be inside their house for the entire story. So just make sure that the setting really matches what you're trying to do. So we have our setting. What? Um, so now let's start thinking about how we might create some of these ourselves. So um, let's start thinking about characters. How? What would you say makes a good character? Okay. I'm sorry? Uh, evil. Evil? Well, yeah, definitely some characters can be evil, but we want to make sure that not all of our characters are evil, right? What would happen if every single character in a book is evil? Anybody? Ruby, what would happen? I call them. What would happen if all the characters were evil? Uh, then there wouldn't be a problem. Then there wouldn't be a problem, yes, because if all the characters are evil, it's like, hi, you're evil too, awesome. <laughs> you know, nobody would really. Or maybe you could have, um, actually, let's say one character is evil and one character is evil, and they're kind of, they, they don't agree on how to be evil, but. Um, Here's, has anyone seen Despicable Me? And seen some raised hands? Yeah, I love that movie. Now in Despicable Me, you have one evil character, one evil character, but the thing is, one character really isn't that evil, right? He's, his, um, he becomes very not evil over the course of the movie, right? So um, even evil characters, one of them generally has to be kind of likable in order for you to have a problem. So when we think about characters, there are a few different terms that you want to know. The main character, 
So think of Harry Potter or um, what is who's what's someone's favorite main character? Throw it out. Favorite main character. Red. Red. from. From Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Okay, Greg from Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And the main Bear. character is also called a protagonist. So, protagonist seems like a pretty long word, but if you remember that the pro at the beginning, um, if you're pro something, you're for something, so a protagonist is the good character. Um, think of pro associated with the main character, protagonist. You have your main character. Now, if we think about Diary of the Wimpy Kid, who is Greg always arguing with? Who is the kind of, um, not really villain, but who is Greg always coming up against? Shit. Roderick. I'm sorry? Roderick. Roderick? Roderick, yeah, exactly. So, you could think of uh, one of the sort of antagonists in the story of Roderick. So an antagonist, if you think of the word, like if you're anti something, you're against. So just think of it as pro and antagonist. So that might help you remember. And then there are other characters as well. There are the supporting characters. The supporting characters are the ones who aren't the main character, aren't, aren't the protagonist or the antagonist, but they might kind of take sides, help out the main character or the antagonist. And the supportive characters are very important in the story as well, because if it was just the protagonist and the antagonist in every single story we read, then we might not get very long stories or very three-dimensional ones. When you create a character, you want to make sure that they are very realistic so that people can identify with them. If you read a story and the protagonist was just an absolutely perfect, really nice person all around, never made any mistakes, would you identify with that character? Would it be a likable character, somebody you think about? Alicia. I think You think they did think of themselves as being perfect, but they're, they, they're not. That's a really good idea. So maybe you could have a character who seems very perfect, thinks of themselves as perfect, but really ha it really isn't, really has a few weaknesses. The important thing to remember is to make your characters likable to the reader, or at least your, your protagonist, your antagonist, you don't have to worry about that quite so much. So give them strengths and weaknesses. And these are actually pretty easy to come up with because you can just think about your own strengths and weaknesses and if you want to give them to the character. So maybe this person's strengths are uh, very smart and athletic and another, what's another strength? Happy. 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 Right. So we have three of these strengths. Smart, athletic, and happy, but maybe a weakness is that they can be sometimes a little mean. So by giving people very balanced strengths and weaknesses, we realize that characters are like us, and that makes them relatable. We feel like we um, know them, or we feel like they're kind of us. So, to go back to our list of ingredients, Creating well-rounded characters is super important. Having a setting that matches your plot, an exciting plot, or at least one that keeps people wanting to read it, and a conflict that helps make the story interesting. What do you say? Are we ready to create our own story now? Yes. Yes. Great! So there's another thing I should probably add here, and this isn't one of the ingredients as much as kind of a big umbrella, but does anyone know what genre is? Uh, the genre is like um, a type of like non-fiction fiction. Very good. The genre is the type of story. So we have the really big ones, non-fiction and fiction, and then we have the smaller ones too. So you all probably have favorite fictional genre like historical fiction or fantasy, mystery, science fiction. Those are all genres. So what kind of genre do you think our story should be? 
you want to take the job in? Ava. Realistic fiction. Okay, great. So, so I'm going to write that here. Realistic fiction. So something that really could, that basically could be happening right now somewhere, if we wanted to. So we have this realistic fiction. So we want to keep things realistic and believable. No, you know, fiery dragons. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. What should our plot be? Any ideas for our plot? Any ideas for the plot? Please. Okay, someone else? Clark? Okay, well then, <laughs> we, 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 we not only want to know what a, what a plot is, we want to know, we want to create a plot right here and now. Josh, you want to give it a try? Like if a character has a problem, like in that room, we can kind of people don't like it, and he wants to be cooler. Great. But okay. we want our own plot. So, oh yes, that's, yes. so we're creating our plot. We'll we'll pro plot. Very cool. in the school, like a bully or something. So, we have a character who's struggling a little bit. Maybe he's new at school, or maybe he's just um, really having difficulty um, with fitting in or he, he feels like he's not cool. Okay, great. So let's, um, I'm going to open up a Word document and we'll start writing. That's not a realistic fiction. We want to change the genre. Realistic fiction is based on somebody's life story. Okay, so um, we're going to and here's another thing. Who here has, has ever felt that way? Like maybe you've ever had, you, you kind of want to be cool. Whoever has, what, has ever wanted to be cool? I'm seeing some raised hands. Yeah, we probably, most of us at some point or another have wanted to be popular or wanted to be cool. So this makes it definitely very realistic because we're basing it off of our own experiences taking things that have actually happened to us and kind of working it in the story. So let's think about that as we start writing, how we can take our own experiences, our own thoughts, and use them in the story. Um, so what, sh what should our main character's name be? Let's start with okay. making a main character. Juliana? Um, Jimmy. Jill, what? Jimmy. Okay. Jimmy. Jimmy? Uh -huh. Jimmy. Jimmy. Very good. So we have our protagonist who is Jimmy. Uh, let me quickly make this a little there so you can see it. And do we have an antagonist? Some sort of, not quite a villain, but someone who he's maybe not this Bob. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's a real big name. <laughs> so let's let's talk about our conflict. So our conflict is that Jimmy wants to be cool, wants to be popular, and is having uh, a lot. He feels like he's having a lot of difficulty with that at his school and with his friends. Okay, so conflict. Jimmy really wants to be cool popular, but, and if we wanted to make it kind of funny, a little bit we can say that Jimmy really wants to be cool and popular, but everything he does to try to make himself cool and popular, uh, it doesn't work at all. And what do you think should be the resolution? How, what should happen at the end of the story? How does this conflict get solved? It gets solved, uh, just here. Bob helps him out somehow. Maybe Bob helps him out? So this would be, maybe Jimmy has, he feels like Bob has been kind of his, his worst enemy this whole time, and then suddenly Bob actually helps him. That's a really good idea. Great, so Bob actually helps Jimmy at the end. And would you
you say, so, and then Jimmy wants to be cool and popular, what, so do you think he, he does become cool and popular, what exactly happens? Hey, Okay, Tom. No, I wasn't answering. Okay. Okay, say it So maybe, here's what we can do. Maybe Jimmy thinks that the way to be cool and popular is to be kind of like, um, really, uh, I don't know, kind of stuck up and wearing really awesome clothes or clothes that he thinks are awesome and walking like this down the hallway or whatever, I'm trying to think of funny ideas. And it actually makes people not like him that much because he's really putting on this, this um, weird kind of stuck up look. And so when, he, when Bob realizes that the reason Jimmy is doing all this is maybe um, because he wants to be popular that helps him and introduces him to some people and maybe Jimmy gets to be in the school talent show or something and he realizes that the way to, be, to, to make friends is not to be putting on this fake idea of who you are that, that really isn't that cool, but instead to actually show people that you're nice. So, we have our characters and the setting. Where should the setting be? At school. High school. Okay. We're at school. Oh, at school. All right. So, we have our plot idea. We have our characters. And if we need some supporting characters, which I think we probably will, um, you'll probably see me adding some along the way. So we'll have teachers and we'll have friends who are popping in. Oh, let me start writing. 7 a.m. The alarm clock rang out loudly. The rang out. Jimmy rolled over. Um, Turned it off violently, so kind of like hitting it uh, to make it go off. You might have done it with your alarm clocks. And lay back in bed for a moment to sigh. He, uh, another day. Of trying to be. Let's see, how should we? He was not looking forward to today at all. Walking to class, Jimmy felt lonelier than ever. His best friend. Okay, so maybe also one of the reasons that Jimmy wants to make himself cool and popular is because his best friend is at a different school, and so he feels a little lonely. His best friend, um, anyone want to throw out a name? John. 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 Okay, so I was about to spell I was about to spell it the Irish way, so we can do it like um, H A W N too. Um, I would say had just moved away, or had just moved to a different school, and and Jimmy didn't think any of these kids liked him that much. But after, uh, after his first first day at school, Jimmy decided that was going to change. It's it's about time for me to start being cooler. He thought as he walked home from school. 
maybe the reason no one pays attention to me is because I'm not cool. Okay, so he thinks, hmm, maybe if uh, maybe I just need to be cooler. I need to really have that appeal. But the question was, how do you make yourself cool? So what what is the image that comes into your mind when you think of cool? What do you think Jimmy's going to think of? Were you able to hear that? Yes, I was. So maybe he kind of starts copying Bob, and so Bob is cool, or Bob is popular, and so he starts copying that, and maybe that maybe that annoys Bob, and that's why Bob doesn't. Bob is sort of the antagonist, um, and then maybe as we're getting toward the end, where Bob is going to help Jimmy out, and maybe Jimmy realizes that he needs to be cool in his own way instead of copying Bob. So perfect. That's great. Jimmy thought of who he knew was cool. Jimmy thought of one person, Bob. Bob was his classmate in. Bob was a classmate and he was. Epitome of cool. Okay, so I know I just used a big word there, but I thought it fit. The epitome of cool. It's like the the person who really just shows cool in, in everything they do. Um, you ever look it up? It's like you um, Everyone loved what he wore, how he, how he spoke, what um, what he wore, what he said, how he walked. Nothing Bob did could be seen as uncool. Now, the question is, how do I become just like that? Jimmy wondered aloud. What? Said someone. Jimmy turned around right away. He hadn't realized someone was walking behind him. So, um, I'm introducing sort of a supporting character there. You were talking to yourself, said a short girl with a bright pink backpack. Aren't you the new kid? Yep. Okay, and what's this girl? Uh, what's this girl's name? Uh, Julia. Julia. I'm Julia. She said. Uh, nice to meet you. Jimmy walked along awkwardly with Julia, um, because you know when you're like walking and there's someone behind you and you feel like, yeah, so it'd be a little awkward. He's, he's not sure whether to talk or not to talk. With Julia following closely behind him, and then decided to turn around and start talking. Um, so what, sh what should we be saying? How we want this conversation to kind of further the plot. So the reason I introduced Julie as a supporting character is I think that we need to have someone who acts as kind of the, the um, not the thermometer, but shows how uh, the rest of the students, not just Bob, but how the rest of the students are feel about Jimmy. So maybe Julia starts off and is like, oh, Jimmy, he's not a bad person, but once Jimmy starts trying to put on this cool act and copy Bob, then she gets a little bit um, surprised and doesn't like him as much or something. So Julia, I went to use to show how Jimmy changes. 
um, if you're wondering why I read it. <laughs> now, what do you think they should talk about? Let's say they have a little quick conversation. Uh, they can talk about uh, their use, their, let's be sent their middle school. They're talking about at the sixth grade, and they're talking about the middle school. Okay, they're talking about the middle school. Alright, so, so are you, um, you, um, not going to the school at all, too? He asked. He wasn't sure if it sounded like a stupid question, since she had just called him the new kid. But she shrugged and said, been here for a year. Mm. I guess we take the same way back to you live on 78th Street, too. Yep. They fell silent and walked back to their continued walk. What do you think of Bob? Jimmy asked. What do you mean? We asked in surprise. Like, do you think he's cool? Can we ask offhandedly? Well, yeah, like everyone else. Really shrugged. Jimmy nodded. He's been shot. Definitely looking at what Bob was doing right and copying it was the way to go. So now he's kind of decided on this plan of action. So Julia thinks Bob is cool, everyone thinks Bob is cool, he decides that he's going to copy Bob. So what is like a kind of ridiculous thing he decides to copy? What do you think is a ridiculous thing he's going to do? Something really silly he can copy, yes. Nice and Thomas. Um, his walk. His walk. His walk. So maybe he starts going like this, but it looks very ridiculous because, I don't know, maybe Bob is taller or something. And so he, he tries to swagger, and he's, but it just looks so stupid that everyone is like, what is that kid doing? Okay. And so he copies the walk. Um, what, what is another thing that he might copy? Uh, <laughs> His clothes. His clothes. So...